Hello, everybody, and welcome to Shaping St. Bernard. I'm your host, Karen Boudry. Each month on Shaping St. Bernard, we're going to take a look at the issues, events, and happenings across the parish that affect all of us. We hope to give you information you might not have been aware of, address your concerns, and basically let you know about things happening from Araby to the end of the world. Today we're going to start with a very, very important issue, a millage election for drainage, a 10-year millage. Now the parish says this is absolutely critical, but last year voters said no to this very same millage. So why are we back here again? Well, we put that question to parish president Guy McInnes and our at-large council members. Well, thanks for joining us this morning, Guy. We, we so appreciate it. We know that this is a very, very important issue and I know you have a lot to say about it, so we'll get started right away. I think there's been confusion over exactly what um, is at stake here. So could we start with explaining the difference between street drainage and canals and pumps? What's the difference that we're talking about here with this millage and how will each of those affect each other? I'm gonna start off just by saying Southeast Levy Protection Authority um, is three levy districts, Orleans, Jefferson, and St. Bernard Parish. That was created after Hurricane Katrina to make sure that our levy system um, uh, serves everyone in those three parishes. St. Bernard is the only levy district that also dealt with drainage uh, in their parish, right? So. We're the only parish that had drainage that went into this large levy system, regional levy system. It's the easiest way that, that I can put it. Now, the only drainage aspect that um, Lake Bourne Levy District um, was doing here in St. Bernard Parish, and they continue to do it through Southeast Levy, is the major canals and all of our pumping stations, which is eight pumping stations and 60 miles of canals. That would be your large canals, the 40 Auburn, 20 Auburn. They've been operating those for the last, let's say, decades, and they've always had 24 7 um, uh, maintenance and shift work with the pumping stations. Started raining at, at the middle of the night, someone was there to turn the pumps on, right? So over the years, um, the funding has declined because now we're doing levies and we have this $14 billion levy that we have to maintain and certify um, with the Corps of Engineer every 10 years. And, and that cost runs around six and a half to seven million dollars a year. And here in St. Bernard Parish, we pay 3.5 million toward that, right? So drainage encompasses a whole lot more than just the main canals and the pumping stations. Without that, the water wouldn't be able to get over our drainage um, levy. But we have an internal drainage system that also includes 60 miles of ditches, let's call them, right? And um, lift stations or, or pumping stations in the Araby and Chalmette area. Most of it is by gravity. And it takes all of our water from the river to the 40 often, and then the pumps take them over the levees. So all of that is um, part of our drainage system. Today, parish government is responsible for those 60 miles of internal ditches, along with the um, subsurface and surface drainage from our neighborhoods to get into the system which Southeast Levy picks up, maintains um, the pumping stations to make sure they get out. Over the years, you'll see that the ditches, or I shouldn't say ditches, the canals aren't maintained. Um, and that's a large part of our drainage. If, if we can't get the water to these canals and flowing, then it does no good to maintain your internal structure. So what we want to do is we want to take over that responsibility from Southeast Levy. Our pumping stations, eight of them, are in disrepair because they just didn't maintain them properly over the last few decades. And the citizens deserve more than that. And if you don't pay for these things now, um, this, um, let's call it a $100 problem today, is gonna to be thousands 
um, years from now. So we need to take over this problem now and um, so that the citizens can hold their elected officials accountable um, for their drainage system. This is the Farty Alton Canal. It's, it's uh, listed as pump station number four, which is actually directly behind the Angelica State Subdivision in Violet. This is actually the wells that actually collects all of the trash. It's called trash rakes. As the water comes down the canal, which is full of vegetation right now, which shouldn't be there. We shouldn't have any vegetation at all in this area. Um, and when the water comes to the pump station, all of the debris and the trash that, that people actually threw into the canals, the stuff that's fallen into the canals, it all comes to, these, to this rake system. And if you, if you look at this rake system as we walking down this way, you can see that they, they rusted out, they corroded. The, the, the chains on the top, on the sprockets, the chains is all solid. They're about to jump off. Uh, there's one over there that's off the sprocket, down on the other end. If you, uh, if you look down up in there, you can see that that piece that's on an angle over there, that's, uh, that actually should be going across. That picks up all the trash and the debris that comes in with the, with the high waters. And the inside of that is the pump well. And what happens when you get a lot of this trash that builds up in the front of the trash rakes, in front of the screens, you don't get enough water in the inside the well, then the pump starts cavitating, and then from there you actually have, uh, you have to idle the pump down to where it can pump about maybe half of the capacity instead of full capacity. If you look at this sprocket over here, take a good look at this one, how the chain actually jumped off because of the stiffness and corrosion and and aware that's on these chains. This whole system right here needs to be replaced. The system right here would probably cost about about one point about one point two million to replace this entire system right here. How are we going to do things differently than what they did that got us in this position that that many people would say is deplorable? Today, Southeast Levee Protection Authority is only spending about a million dollars a year on our system that we need about $3 million a year to maintain. What will happen differently? We will have 24 hour, um, seven days a week coverage at our pumping stations. We won't have to worry Bodies. about we're, we're talking about people, we're people there manning them. Okay. Ready to turn pumps on and maintaining them on a daily basis rather than a yearly basis. It's totally unacceptable when you go look at some of our pumping stations right now um, we can't even get lilies in a rake system, you know, out of the way. We have to get excavators there. St. Bernard Parish government sends our employees there to make sure that the water can get into the pumps and gets over the levee, right? That is unsustainable for a community that is on the coast and we worry about flooding. If you look around at our canals today, you know, they're overgrown, they haven't been maintenanced. If you go to our pump station, they've hugely been ignored and um, they have not been maintenance obviously in a very long time you know to bring those up to date to you know make them make sure they're functioning to make sure that they're operated uh, like they should be we'll be able to do all of that and make sure that when the water gets to those canals you know they can it can get out of here in the most efficient manner possible pre-katrina we had 24 pump operators in st bernard Parish. today we have eight which means so we have eight pumping stations, right? And we have eight pump operators. When you have a, a big rainstorm, it takes two people to operate a pump because when those rakes rake up the grass and stuff to clear the pump, they have to scoot that out the way and somebody's gotta be operating They're the pump. They're down there doing that. So we have eight pump operators, which means when you start giving days off and things like that, we really have four pump operators working at a time to man eight stations. So you can see some, you're gonna see some of those little changes happen instantly. We're going to man the stations properly 24 hours a day. We're going to, we have a budget put together on our projections to operate the canals and the pumps and, and it is going to be definitely a better job and it's going to be more efficient and you will see some, some cleanups start happening immediately. We've already secured four million dollars from CPRA um, to do some of that work. So some of that work is ongoing right now anyway and it's not our responsibility. We've already spent $2 million of FEMA money for safe houses in our pump stations. Parish government spent that money. Right now, we are replacing four pumps. We've secured those funds from FEMA um, and, and are doing that. So we're doing everything that we can 
to make sure that the citizens have a proper drainage system. If we don't take over this drainage system, mainly the pumping stations, soon, it will, it's deplorable today, and it's only going to get worse exponentially when you don't fix some of these small problems. It's important for everybody to know that at the end of 2021, not only does St. Bernard Parish not have any money for drainage, but the state tax rolled off this year. So they're not going to have any money for drainage in St. Bernard Parish. And it's time for us to step up and take control of our own drainage and handle it the way that it's supposed to be handled. Because once both entities are out of money, you think it looks bad now, it's gonna deteriorate at an even quicker rate. And so these big rainstorms that we see in lately are gonna mean more street flooding and possibly some homes flooded, which we are trying to avoid at all costs. Because if we would have a Hurricane Isaac sit over us for 26 hours and just drop rain on us like it did years ago, we're gonna be in big trouble. And especially as things get worse. The, the, you know, you, right now you need seven inches of rain to flood us. In another year, you'll need four inches, and then it'll be two inches, which is something you see really common in the spring months, these, these hard rains that come down and flood our streets. So what we're trying to do is prevent that from happening. We see the writing on the wall. We see where it's going, and we're urging residents to look into this. Get the information you need to make a good decision on Election Day and vote for what you believe is going to carry St. Bernard forward for the future of your family. So for folks out there listening right now, watching right now, and say, well, okay, my street floods every time. We had those seven storms, but even even without a major storm, if we have a good downpour, my, my, my downpour, my street floods, will this help that? Streets are designed to flood in a rain, right? You have a curb, right it's, it's a canal, yeah. right? So, a perfectly run system is still only going to take in about three inches of rain in the first hour and a half inch of rain after that, right? So we know that. That's why our neighborhoods are built like they are. But what you will see happening is the 40 open and the 20 arpents filling up faster because the water can't move. Whether the pumps aren't on or whether the pumps aren't working. And when that happens, you know, uh, you know, a flood to the top of the curb becomes a flood in your home. We spend $400,000 a year on internal drainage. That's our budget. We don't have a tax for that. We take that out of our general fund. Now, we're talking, you know, 8,500 catch basins, $400,000, one line that we have to replace in Lexington, let's just say, $150,000. We're talking about a 200-foot line of drainage that we have to replace. It's, it, it's very um, costly. So this issue was brought up last year and put before voters and they turned it down. What's different now? I want to address that issue. You know, I've talked to some of my friends and, and you know, you get that. You know, how many times do you have to go out before no is no, right? I understand that. Um, but we would be negligent in what we're doing as, our, as officials to not to continue to try to get this message to you because we know what's going to happen in the future. And when, if, if we don't do anything now and provide the funding, or at least ask the citizens to provide the funding um, for our drainage, then we've done everything we were supposed to do um, and being truthful and being transparent to the citizens and what we think is going to happen in the future if we don't take care of this problem. Would you also say that we're also here trying to clarify that there was there was definitely some confusion last time and that this is also about trying to clarify a little bit better what's really what you're really asking for as well. Um, we've been dealing with this issue for five years in negotiating with Southeast right. Levy, trying to make sure that drainage for our citizens um, are paramount. And right now, we're, we're at, at the end of this year, we're going to be paying seven mills to Southeast Levy Protection Authority, not to parish government, to Southeast Levy Protection Authority to take care of our drainage, of which we know they're only spending a million dollars on right now. So the only way that we can solve the issue, the complicated, confusing issue of the, um, how much our citizens need to pay for levy protection, versus Orleans and Jefferson, is to pull out this drainage, drainage 
and to pay for, right? So right now we have a, a framework where we get some cash from the taxes that we've been paying over the years um, from Southeast Levy. Um, they do not renew um, a millage. It's, I believe it's 4.3 mills, which is going to come off of the tax rolls. That's in 2022. Correct. Correct. Okay. And we will basically be renewing that, right, 4.3. And it's going to a different place. It's, it's, it's going to be coming to your parish government right. rather than to Southeast Levy to handle your drainage. Ultimately, your taxes are going to go down, even if this passes. We had a hospital millage that fell off. And, you know, we've been paying 4.36 mills to the state for this drainage for years. And, and all we're really doing is shifting that over to local government and making sure that we have enough money to, to operate it properly, to make it look good and clean, and, and your taxes still go down. So you'll have better drainage and, and less taxes. What I would like to say as simply as I can to citizens, you know, you have to trust your elected officials in this. We've been working for five years to take care of this problem. The easy, easy thing would be to don't worry, just let, let's not worry about it because that's gonna be somebody else's problem down the road, yeah. right? Well, it's my problem down the road because I live here. <laughs> and it's your children's well, yeah, problem, it's and, your and, grandchildren's and, problem. And when my house floods, then I'm gonna say, I didn't do everything I needed to do because I took the easy road to it. So, you know, if you want quality, um, anything, and we all, we're talking about drainage here. If you want quality, if you want to say so in what's happening, then we need to pay for it, right? And people can ask, you know, how much are we paying for it and all of this. Those studies have already been done. The minimal amount of money that it's going to take to take over these pumping stations and these 60 miles of canals is $3 million. That, that, that is a minimum, right? Right now we're getting, think about this for a second. They're putting in a third of a minimum for our drainage system. And it, it's just um, inappropriate. Well, one thing to, to take note of is Cephala is based out of Baton Rouge. And it's important to have people in charge of your flooding that are gonna flood with you when it floods, right? If it floods, me and my family are gonna flood just like the citizens of St. Bernard Parish. So it's gonna be a high priority for St. Bernard Parish government to make sure that our drainage is handled properly, that our canals are cleaned, and that the water flows the way it's supposed to and that the pumps are all working properly. If this does not pass, what happens? We, we have clogged drains or we take the money somewhere else or have, have we even, you know, low, even thought about that, basically. After this went through the first time um, and did not pass, you know, we sat down and had a conversation about what that meant. You know, I mean, to me, that means one of two things. You know, the St. Bernard citizens don't want us to take over this drainage. They don't want us to, to make these changes that we think are necessary, or they think that we should be able to find that money elsewhere. Um, and so we had a conversation on what, what does that look like? You know, if we have to find this money elsewhere, what does that mean for St. Bernard? And obviously, we believe that this is an important enough issue that we will have to do that. We will have to find this money somewhere else because we can't, you know, just let people flood. That's not, you know, as, as elected officials, that's not something that we're willing to do. So we have to find this $3 million plus a year somewhere else. And for me, that was a horrible thought. You know, I mean, we've spent the last five years in, that, you know, I've been in office, Richie's been here a little bit longer, building up the quality of life here and building up programs that mean so much to moving St. Bernard forward. And I know what taking that money away means. I know it means taking that quality of life that we have been able to give back to the community and pulling it away. You know, we have, we've, came in and cut the budget down so that we could add things like our coastal department, like our litter abatement services, our garbage pickup services, our recreation department that means so much to our kids. Those are the things that are gonna to have to be cut 
if we have to find the money for drainage in our budget. And those are the things that make St. Bernard wonderful. You know, those are the things that make us a better community today than we were five years ago. And it breaks my heart to think that we would have to cut those things from our community to be able to fix this problem. So that's why it was important enough for us to bring this back again for the people of St. Bernard. Since the storm, we've been doing baby steps and we've been doing the right things, right? Every single thing we've done from that day to today hadn't been perfect, but whatever we've done, we starting to see the, the, all of the good things that we've been looking for. Property values, vacant lots, five times the amount pre-Katrina levels, right? People are looking at St. Bernard Parish because it's a good value. Not only just in the home price, but it's safe. We have a great education system. And now, our politics, everybody's working together. And I just think good things start to happen when you just come to work every day and you're trying to do the right thing. And if we have all of our elected officials on the same page, working toward this one goal in the one eyesore that we have, when you drive around our neighborhoods, we're not even responsible for at this point. We got fences falling into canals. We have canals filled with debris. So we have so many good things going. It's the perfect place to be between the city and Sportsman's Paradise. And we got one problem and it's not even our responsibility today. So what citizens need to do is grab that responsibility so that that eyesore goes away or that problem with property values in the future, if something happens, goes away. And all of the other discussions, the complicated discussions on what we should be paying as citizens for this levy system, which is not drainage, right, becomes clear for officials to do something about it to help us. And that's what we're trying to do. Thank you for boiling it down like that. Appreciate it. All right. All right. Thanks so much for, for joining us today. God bless. Again, we want to reiterate that this is a 10-year millage for drainage canals and our pumping stations. And now we turn to another crucial funding issue, this one on our front lines. Chief, thank you very much for being with us today to talk about this. You have been chief for 31 years, so yes, you saw this department when it was in its infancy, which was really almost no training, no certification that you have today, that the, no insurance rate, high insurance ratings that the parish enjoys today. You've worked really hard to build all this up. So this is a renewal. What does this mean for the department and St. Bernard Parish in, in general? Karen, this renewal is very important to the fire department. It, it is at least 20% of our operating budget, of our entire budget. And you know, our budget, 90%, 88% go to employee salaries and benefits. So we really only operate the fire department on about a 10 to 12% portion of the budget. And that covers apparatus maintenance, fuel, utilities, repairs. So this millage, if it doesn't pass, I don't know what we're going to do because we're going to be without money to operate. And when we passed it 10 years ago, we promised the people that we would lower the insurance rating, and we actually did. We went down to a class two parish wide, probably the best parish wide fire rating in the state of Louisiana. You get those insurance ratings and, or in, and those um, fire department ratings by having the right amount of manpower, having the right equipment, the right training. What am I missing, Chief? What else? 50% of the rating is the fire department. 40% is your water service and your water supply. And 10% is fire communications and 911. Okay. So it, it's kind of like you, you have to answer calls in so many seconds. You have to have so much training for your communications officers for the sheriff's department and the fire department. And for the rating that we're currently going through right now, we're being rated on 2020. They answered over 56,000 phone calls. Wow. And a majority of them have to be answered within 30 seconds. 
And then the fire department is the secondary part of 911 or what we call the backup. And then uh, we're rated on how fast we answer our phone calls. And you're looking at 95% of them within 30 seconds. So it's, it's just a lot. And then you look at your water and our water has improved dramatically in the last few years, especially in the eastern part of the parish with new water lines. So that's 40% of your rating. And then getting to your question about fire, fire goes by training. You have to have so many training hours of different topics every year. Just company training five days a week for the firefighter that's in a fire station has to have 196 hours per year. They have to have 18 hours of drill training, which we're so lucky that the New Orleans Fire Department allows us to use their facility on Saturdays. Uh, officers have to have 12 hours a year. They have to have six hours of hazardous materials training a year. You have to have uh, 24 hours of fire inspector training, four hours of 40 hours of fire investigator training, uh, continuing education for drivers, 80 hours for new drivers, 240 hours for recruits. It's just a Suffice whole lot of training. Suffice it to say, it's a lot of, yeah, yeah, a whole lot of training. It's a lot. It's a lot of record keeping. It's a lot of uh, mandates that you have to meet. This renewal um, um, has, has been on the books since I've been in office, right? And we've needed every penny um, of, of the, all of the taxes that go to our first responders here at the fire department. I can't imagine losing um, this, right? Um, and what impact that would have on our community. I don't see that happening because I know how our community feel about our firefighters, about our fire department, about where we're going. Um, you know, that, that staffing level uh, needs to stay the same. Our insurance rating continues to need to go up while our insurance rates go down. And uh, I feel so confident in our community that this renewal um, is something that we're going to take care of on April 24th. And now we want to take a moment to recognize our fire department, the staff, the EMS, basically all of our first responders for the work they've done during this COVID pandemic, um, many times risking their own lives and those of their families to make sure that we are safe and that our families were safe during this pandemic. So a heartfelt thank you to all of our first responders. Again, the election, April 24th, early voting is April 10th through April 17th. It is your chance to make a difference. So get out there and do it. I'm Karen Boudry, thanks for joining us and we hope to see you next time on Shaping St. Bernard.